Okay, so this video is going to set out to define a term that I think uh, if you ask most people to really pinpoint and like say what it means, they probably couldn't do it off the top of their head. So it's kind of a complicated topic. We're going to talk about how to define the word literature. What does the word literature mean? And to me, to help you figure that out, I thought we should probably go back through mass communication text and literature because they kind of lead from one to the other. So to review mass communication, mass communication is when you communicate with a lot of people over a long period of time. And generally speaking, this is when you like write a book or make a movie, record a song, publish a blog, write a newspaper article. Do those things that can communicate with lots of people over a long period of time. Okay, so if we're doing mass communication, the thing that we produce is a text. A text is a thing that does the mass communicating. So I write a book, the book is the text. I make a movie, the movie is the text. I write a song, the song is the text. So texts are things that do mass communication. Okay, so what's literature? Literature is a type of a text. It's a type of a text that has some qualifications in order to be literature. The first and most simplest one, it's been written down as a book. There's not a lot of definitions for literature out there that have anything other than that as its basis. It's been written down as a book. So when we talk literature, we're talking books. But also, we're not just talking any old kind of book. We're talking a book that has been considered to be really good. Now, this is where it gets confusing. Because to understand it as a book, it's like, cool, I know what a book is, great. That's literature? Well, not quite. It's a book that's considered to be really good. Okay. But to form like a definition for like everybody to accept, the question would be like, considered to be good by who? Like, who thinks that's good? Well, traditionally, like if you were to look for like, if you're like search Google for like a list of literature, like you'd probably come up with a bunch of books. And generally speaking, the books that are considered to be literature, and that list grows all the time, are books that are considered to be really good by people who have a lot of experience reading books and thinking closely about those books. And that's not, that shouldn't come as some great shock that maybe we would trust people who spend a lot of time reading books to kind of define what these really good books are. We would do that with anything, right? Like if I wanted to, I don't know, buy a new snowboard, I wouldn't just like go ask some like three-year-old, like, hey, what's the best kind of snowboard? And they'd be like, yeah, they don't know anything about snowboards. I'd probably go ask someone who, like, has ridden a lot of snowboards, who knows a lot about snowboarding, who's, like, really looked at the construction of a snowboard and different snowboards and compared them and thought about, okay, which one is better than the other? Okay, this is a really good snowboard. And the same could be said for anything, right? Like, if you're trying to go buy makeup, right, and you walked up to me and you're like, Mr. Cowan, what's the best kind of makeup to be buy? I'd be like, I don't know. I don't anything about makeup the red one I don't know you'd probably go ask someone who knows a lot about makeup who goes and like who's used a lot of makeup who's compared the makeup who's looked at like what is it made out of how does it work like does it function well like it's supposed to does it look good you would probably ask an expert someone who spends a lot of time doing that we would do that with anything in the entire world and with literature we'd probably do the same thing if we're trying to define what literature is we'd probably start with an expert opinion because that person might have a little bit more to say about it. Someone who's read a lot of books and has been able to think about those books a little more carefully because they've spent a lot of time with them and that's kind of their thing. So for us and this year, my goal for you is to start to develop a palette for literature. And what that means to develop a palette for literature is to start to figure out what books are good, what books are worthy of your time to read, now that answer can change all the time. Some books are not considered to be literature, but they're still fun to read. They might not be like super complex, they might not give you tons to think about, but they're still super fun and that's awesome. But usually a, a book that's considered to be literature probably is going to be a little more complex. It's probably going to give you a little more to think about. In our class, we're going to learn what's called literary analysis. That's where we break down literature. We take a good piece of literature and we try to figure it out and look at how it's put together and break it down into all these different parts. Well, a good piece of literature should give us a lot to think about while we do that. It shouldn't be a, just easy answers the whole time. It should actually be a lot of right answers that people can come to different conclusions and everybody can be kind of right. And we can all think deeply about it and it gives us something to like really think about and really talk about 
and it gives us stuff to write about. That's a good piece of literature. And for you to figure that out takes time. It totally takes time. Just like figuring out the best of anything takes time. Shakespeare is considered to be good literature, right? But if I took Hamlet, like a Shakespeare play, and walked up to a fifth grader, and I was like, hey, fifth grader, read Hamlet. That fifth grader would 99% of the time turn around in like five minutes and be like, this sucks. Because they haven't had the experience. You can't go from Captain Underpants to Shakespeare in five minutes and be like, oh, this is amazing. Shakespeare is super complex. It's harder to read. The words are harder to understand. The stories are a little harder to understand. There's a lot of things to break down in a Shakespeare play. There's a lot of things to think about. It's more challenging. So to get there, we need practice. We're going to practice breaking down stories. We're going to practice reading stories. And we'll get better at figuring out what is good literature. And at the end of the day, if you read Shakespeare after that experience and that practice, and you're like, I don't like it, cool. That's fine. No judgment. I am never going to tell you what good literature is. I will never, ever tell you one book is better than another. This is going to be your quest and your journey to figure out, which is what is good literature? What makes a story worthy of our time? All right, so let's get to it.